we'll be creating a failover group between um, uh, the South India managed instance and the Central India managed instance. So uh, what I'm going to do is like I will be uh, creating a uh, failover group from JB uh, dist mi pra si2 the Central India managed instance which is JB dist mi sec ci so uh, basically like this will act as uh, the disaster recovery between uh, these two instances. So uh, once we have configured uh, the failover group between these two instances, where uh, the South India instance will act as uh, primary and then uh, the managed instance in um, Central India will act as secondary. So going forward, uh, whenever you add um, uh, database on the primary it gets uh, replicated automatically across to uh, the central India managed instance using failover group and once uh, you drop a database in uh, the primary managed instance uh, the sec uh, that database will also automatically get dropped from the secondary managed instance so that is what will happen so we will be able to use this failover group to failover from uh, primary to secondary at any point in time and um, uh, using that, we will be able to achieve the disaster recovery from South India to Central India. So let's um, go ahead and click on the uh, primary managed instance, which in my case is on uh, South India region. So let me click on that. And then uh, if we uh, look at it here, uh, we have something called failover groups under data management. So let's click on that. So what we'll do now is like, we will uh, click on add group here. And now what I'll do is like I will uh, give a, a failover group name, kind of a listener name using which you will be able to connect to uh, 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 the SQL server. So uh, we will have a uh, common name, which is uh, same as you're always on listener, wherein uh, you will be able to uh, uh, connect to uh, the SQL server, whichever is primary at that point in time. So uh, it's going to be transparent as far as your application is concerned, if it uses the failover group name and um, uh, any connections to that will basically be going to uh, uh, the primary uh, instance as far as uh, uh, right workload is concerned if you're not configuring anything else. So what we'll do now is like, we will give in a failover group name, which is going to be JB DIST. So it needs to be in um, lower case, uh, lower case. So let's change it to JB uh, DIST. So this is going to be the failover group name here. And as far as uh, the secondary managed instance is concerned, what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to select uh, JB-DIST-MI-SEC-CI. So uh, the primary is this one, the primary managed instance is this one, and the secondary managed instance is this one. Yep, so um, a read-write uh, failover policy, it is uh, going to be uh, automatic here. So we have manual also. So um, um, a failover policy, uh, it is up to you uh, what you want to select, but here I'm going to select as manual. And um, um, the read and write grace periods, it is uh, uh, right now set to uh, one hour. So what I'll do is like, let me create on, uh, let me click on uh, create here. Before clicking uh, create, uh, let's uh, look at the read write failover policy one more time. Uh, so, uh, so right now we have uh, selected manual that allows us to uh, perform uh, uh, the manual failover from uh, primary managed instance to secondary managed instance um, uh, whenever we will be able to do it. For example, like let's uh, consider there is an uh, outage on the primary uh, uh, managed instance or let's consider we have planned to uh, move it as part of an, um, a disaster recovery test or uh, things like that. What happens is like uh, it is under the control of uh, um, the user and uh, the user has to basically decide uh, when to do the failover as far as um, a read or write failover policy is uh, set to manual. On the other hand, um, uh, as far as um, uh, automatic is concerned, what happens is like we can see that uh, the read and uh, write grace period is uh, set to uh, one hour and one hour is uh, the minimum time frame there. So uh, if we discuss like uh, what is this um, uh, uh, read and uh, read or write uh, uh, grace period. So the grace period is the time you choose before the auto failover is performed. So if you choose the minimum, which is uh, one hour, that means auto failover doesn't happen until that one hour passes. 
the data loss in a healthy replica should be um, five seconds or less. So the grace period is used to synchronize things that are not yet moved to the secondary, so you don't lose any data. But if there are still pending transactions that can't be moved in that uh, one hour, uh, whatever is uh, mentioned uh, in that uh, grace period, auto failover will happen after that uh, whatever time is selected in the grace period in our case it is going to be one hour and there will be kind of like five seconds of um, uh, data loss so that is um, uh, what this grace period is um, uh, is referring to as far as uh, read or write failover policy automatic is concerned but on the other hand when you select it manual the whole control comes to um, uh, the customer and um, uh, this gets actually um, uh, blurred out you will not be able to select anything here so let's create or uh, let's click on create here so let's uh, wait for it to be uh, created so it is uh, currently the deployment is in progress once this is completed we will be able to um, uh, see that the failover group is configured between the managed instance in South India to Central India it is uh, still getting created. Uh, if you can see here, I'm uh, able to see that uh, it is active as far as the primary managed instance is concerned, but uh, secondary managed instance, it is still going on. So the replication status is showing as uh, seeding right now. So we have the listener endpoint and read one the listener endpoint uh, details here, but uh, it is going to take some more time for it to complete on the secondary managed instance. Also, if you look at it here, what I'm able to see is like as far as South India is concerned, uh, it is kind of completed, but as far as the Central India is concerned, it is still going on. So it's going to take some more time, and after that, we will be able to see an active link between South India and Central India. It just completed. Uh, so if you look at it here, uh, the deployment is succeeded. And if you are able to see here, um, we have um, um, uh, it configured, the failover group configured between the primary managed instance and the secondary managed instance. And the replication status is showing as uh, synchronizing here. Yeah. So that means like uh, the replication that is the always on kind of uh, uh, is kind of started between uh, South India managed instance to uh, the central India managed instance. So what we'll do now is like we will try connecting to the read and write uh, listener endpoint and also like we will try connecting to the read only listener endpoint and see if it is uh, working as expected. Let's uh, first try connecting to read write listener endpoint. Let's copy it and then uh, let's uh, connect to uh, uh, the endpoint using SSMS. So let me gain the password. So if you look at it here, we are able to connect to it. And then we are able to see a database called JVDB. So let's click on new query window. And then try a select at, at server name. So if we see here, it is basically now pointing it to uh, uh, the South India managed instance, which is JB iPhone, and dist mi and pra iphone si. So let's change the database context to JVDB, and then uh, try um, uh, running this uh, database property ex command to so see the updatability for this particular database. So if I execute it, what I'm able to see is like I'm able to uh, see that um, uh, 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 the updatability on this particular database is read, right? So that means like it is again confirming like we are connected to the primary. So let's try creating a uh, sample uh, table, create table, um, table seven, SNO in teacher. Let's try creating a dummy table and then see if you're able to create it. integer again so let's try creating it we are able to create and then let's try inserting some rows here to tab early seven values one go so let's try executing it maybe let's try inserting 10 rows and yep we are able to insert without any issues so Let's try querying it. 
and we are able to see that 10 rows inserted. So now what we'll do is like we will try connecting to the read only listener endpoint. And then let's see if we can connect to it. And then let's try uh, uh, maybe like uh, querying a table. Maybe we can try querying table 7 and see if we can do that. Oh, we are able to connect to it. Now let's click on a new query window. And then what I'll do is like I'll first execute select added server name. And what we are able to see is like right now we are able to see the other managed instance that is a secondary managed instance which is JV iPhone dist mi iPhone SEC iPhone CI which basically tells like it is central India. So let's change the database context to uh, JVDB and then try uh, executing this uh, database property X and it very clearly tells like it is in read only. Yep. So what we'll do is like we'll try creating a table here. I'm pretty sure it is going to fail, but let's try that out. And uh, we are definitely getting the error uh, failed to update our database JVDB because the database is read only. So now what we'll do is like we will um, uh, fail over uh, uh, the failover group and then um, 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 see uh, if uh, uh, after connecting to these uh, endpoint name whether uh, the servers are getting um, interchange. So let's try that out. So what we'll do is like uh, on the Azure portal uh, under uh, failover groups what we'll do is like we will uh, try a failover here. Yep. So it is basically telling are you sure you want to uh, fail over to your secondary. This will make all secondary managed databases primary. All your current TDS sessions will be disconnected and new sessions will be rerouted to the secondary managed instance. So this is what we are going to uh, uh, do. And once we do that, uh, the secondary instance will become primary and then all the connections uh, will be like kind of disconnected and new sessions will be routed to the secondary managed instance, which will become your primary. So let me click on yes. So let's wait for the failover to complete and then we will uh, check it out. Okay, the failover is started now. So if you can see here, um, uh, the failover uh, uh, in progress is the replication status. And then now we just got a message stating like failover group failover succeeded. And if you see here, uh, the primary managed instance is now um, the uh, previous secondary, which is uh, uh, JB iPhone, dist MI iPhone, SEC, basically SEC is secondary, and uh, CI is Central India. So this has become uh, the primary managed instance now. And then uh, the managed instance in uh, South India is uh, now the secondary instance. So now what we'll do is like we will try connecting to the uh, listener endpoint and then let's do the same thing that we have done before. So let me connect to it. Yep, I'm connected. So let's click on uh, new query. Then try select at server name. So if we see here, um, the Central India managed instance, which is JB iPhone dist MI iPhone SEC iPhone CI, is now uh, the primary instance. Yeah. After we connected to the uh, endpoint, we are now able to see this particular name here. So now what we'll do is like. We will uh, try uh, checking uh, the database property ex command for the database jbdb. So let's try that. So if I run it, what I'm able to see is like the database is read write. So now what we'll do is like we will connect to uh, the read only listener endpoint, and we should basically be seeing. Uh, um, the other instance that is present in uh, uh, South India to be the secondary. So let's try that out. Yep, connected. So let's try uh, clicking on a new query window and then check that further. So let's uh, execute that command. And what we are able to see is like uh, we are able to see uh, uh, 
uh, okay we have not copied it across so let's uh, click on a new query window here so let's run select uttered server name so it is basically pointing to jb iphone dist mi iphone pra uh, iphone si which is south india instance and then let's change the database context to jbdb and then let's try running this command it should be showing read only and it is showing as read only so just to check it again on the primary uh, that is i've just connected to this uh, 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 listener endpoint jb dist and then if I look at it, it is basically pointing to the Central India managed instance. And then on the uh, context of uh, JVDB, if I run this query, it is showing us read write. On the other hand, on the secondary instance, if you look at it here, it is JVDIS to secondary. This is JVDIS secondary. So if I run that command, it is basically pointing to the South India instance. And then uh, on the context of JVDB user database, if I run this, it is showing us read only. So now what we'll do is like, we will try uh, creating a database here, a sample database. Let's uh, create the, the database, uh, let the name be um, um, JB Finance, some name here. And then what I'll do is like, I will click on options. I think like I will go ahead with uh, everything as uh, default maybe like i'll change the compatibility mode to uh, 2022 and then uh, click on okay but i just look at the recovery model it is all uh, kind of disabled that means like any database that needs to go on to the managed instance will be in full recovery model that's something that we need to uh, um, uh, keep in mind so let's click on okay So if you see here, as soon as I uh, created that, uh, I'm able to see that database JV Finance in the secondary also. So let me refresh it here. And then, uh, so what happens is like, as soon as you create it, it will be created on the secondary too. So let's wait for the database to, uh, database to create. Yep. It will take some time uh, for, for the database to be created because what happens is like as soon as you create the database, uh, the backup has to be taken and then it needs to be restored on the secondary and then we basically have to configure uh, uh, the failover group between these two servers. So the database creation is going to take some time. So let's uh, refresh the instance one more time. I kind of uh, paused this video for like uh, close to uh, uh, 10 minutes um, and uh, it basically took around uh, 10 to uh, 15 minutes for the database to be created on uh, both the instances. So, but anyhow, when you create a database on the primary, um, the process is automatic. Uh, the payload, it will be added to the failover group and then the database will be uh, created on the secondary too. With the time taken, um, um, basically, uh, uh, changes like uh, uh, it can uh, go up uh, a bit if the database size is a uh, little huge. Yep. So let's look at the primary instance. We have this database called JP Finance. Let's uh, refresh the secondary instance that is uh, the read only endpoint here. And then I'm able to see the database uh, JP Finance created there also. So what we'll do now is like we will look at the um, uh, Azure portal and see if we can uh, look at um, uh, the database uh, JP Finance. So I'll open the um, a managed instance in Central India, which is uh, JB Iphen Dist MI uh, SECCI, uh, because we did a failover uh, before. So if I look at it here, what I'm able to see is like we have two databases created, JVDB and JB Finance, and then I will uh, look at the um, uh, South India instance, which is JB Dist MI PRASI. So let's click on that. And if you see here, um, we are able to see the database, uh, uh, databases JVDB and JB Finance. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jai Hind.